know, when I edit things like that, it's like everything seems to be perfect. All my animals seem to be colourful, active, healthy, which is like everything that a reptile keeper wants, right? But I've been doing this for six years now, you know, keeping reptiles and then making the videos. And it sort of got to the point where that, it just, it doesn't feel the same as it used to. Like, I just can't get enthused about doing it anymore. And, you know, I, I have enjoyed every minute of keeping reptiles, but I think it's just got to the point where keeping doing it week on week, making videos and thinking about reptiles and planning all this stuff, it's just... I've basically had enough of it at this point, so in today's video what I think I'm going to be doing is my last reptile room tour and then after that, um, I think I'm going to start rehoming. Uh, I might, there's one or two special ones I might want to keep just for pet value, but in terms of reptiles, I think I'm done. <laughs> Nah, April Fools! <laughs> anyway, so in all seriousness now, um, what we are actually going to be doing in this video is taking a look at every single one of my reptiles enclosures, going through them all, what's in them, what's changed since the last reptile room tour that we did in September 2019, um, and of course doing updates on all of the individual reptiles so that you can see how they've been getting on. Now because it has been such a large amount of time since we last did one of these videos, I do have a lot to talk about, so make sure that you're sitting comfortably before we get into this one, because I can probably tell that it's going to be a long video, and let's get straight into it. And I think we're going to start off with Speckles the Leopard Gecko. Now, me man Speckles is in a roughly 3x2x2 by two by two foot um, wooden vivarium, which works out at about 60 US gallons for my transatlantic viewers. Um, and as you can tell, like most of the rest of my vivaria, it is bioactive and it does have some live plants in it. Um, now, part of this enclosure, which is something that I added since the last reptile room tour, is actually a full cork background. Now, in the video where I showed you how to build a background like this, um, I was saying that I sort of wanted to add something to it, maybe air plants or Spanish moss or something, which I think is a type of air plant. Um, just because the background sort of all cork bark and it just looks brown. Now, somebody in the comments of those videos actually suggested why don't I get a climbing plant, and I thought that that was quite a good idea. So, as you can tell, I have actually added some little pothos, or devil's ivy, whatever you want to call it. Um, I only added that about a week ago, so it's still rooting in, but it does seem to be doing well thus far, and I'm hoping that when it climbs up the background, it will add a bit of a different look. Now, Speckles the Leopard Gecko himself did actually go through his first full brumation period this winter. It lasted a full five months, and throughout the entire time he didn't eat anything. Now, if you don't know, brumation is just sort of the reptile and amphibian term for hibernation. Um, it's something that I'll talk about again, but basically through all of that period, Speckles was just asleep and not eating anything. Um, but through all of that, he didn't actually really lose any weight. As you can tell, Speckles is quite a chunky little boy and I do want him to lose some weight. So at the moment I have only been feeding him um, once a fortnight with one insect, just enough to keep him going really, um, and you know, in time he should shed that weight. Having the cork background in there is going to help with that because he does climb up that background, I have seen him melt it. Um, so just moving about, hopefully he'll get him exercising, get his muscles working, and that should help him come down to a healthier weight as well. In terms of heating and lighting, Speckles Enclosure does have an Arcadia Deep Heat Projector for its heat. Um, now I did do a video not too long ago all about heating elements. There are a couple of things I've learned since then that I would maybe say differently and talk about differently now um, since making that video. But the main points still hold and one of those was that 
standard tungsten filament bulbs are actually superior to carbon filament ones, such as the deep heat projector. Now, because it's actually getting to the warmer portion of the year, you know, we've got, we're getting to the middle of spring and it'll be summer in not many months, um, the need for nighttime heating now is reduced. So I will be changing out that heater to just like a standard light in, you know, maybe another week or two once it's a bit warmer. Also, the last thing there in terms of electrical items is just like the lighting. So it does have a two foot white python LED kit. Um, which just adds most of the visible light and he also has an Arcadia Pro T5 Shade Dweller unit. Um, the Shade Dweller did change the bulb in not long ago so it is a fresh bulb that's burnt in now um, and testing that with a solar meter 6.5 tells me that towards the hot end of his enclosure there is an ultraviolet index of getting on towards one. In some places it's getting on towards two but those are sort of hard for the gecko, the geckos. I'll tell you why I'm saying plural geckos in a moment, um, but just ignore that for now. Uh, basically, it gets towards two at the very, very max if the geckos really try and reach it. Um, but what they are really going to see is one, and then going into the shade is zero, which is ideal for a shade-dwelling reptile like this. And once again, if you want to learn more about ultraviolet indexes and what they mean, and also why ultraviolet is so important for reptiles, then I did do a video about that not too long ago, so if you want to see it, then I'll leave a link in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. Anyway, jumping back to why I said plural geckos, um, the main reason for adding the court bark background was that I am going to be adding two more leopard geckos to this enclosure to form a little breeding group. Um, and, you know, just adding the cork bark was done to provide more hiding spots and more areas so that the geckos, once they're all in there together, will be able to evade each other and get out of each other's way. Now, the other two leopard geckos that I will be adding, I do already have. I got, I got them a couple... Well, it was over a month. I can't even remember when I got them. It was like one or two months ago now. Um, but those two girls are called Dottie and Pepper, and they are still in quarantine. Both of them are doing fantastically well and they are extremely tame, um, which is another thing that I'm going to talk about in another video. Um, but they're just doing well. The only thing that's changed since last time, apart from them getting more used to me and wanting to come out and be held and so on, is that I have actually added calci sand as a substrate for them. And before everybody kicks off, I just want to say that calci sand is not a good substrate, that I don't recommend it, and the only reason for using it is to draw attention to a point that I've made in another video. <laughs> I keep mentioning other videos, I should probably stop doing that, um, because then you'll click off and then my watch time will go down and then like YouTube's algorithm will shoot me. Um, but in another video, uh, I talked about calci sand and using it myself is just to illustrate a point I made in that video. Back to the main reptile room, the next animal that we're going to talk about is one down from Speckles, and that is Red the Corn Snake. Now Red the Corn Snake's enclosure is 150 centimetres long, 60 centimetres deep, and 60 centimetres tall, which works out at about 140 US gallons, I think. I wrote it down somewhere. 140 US gallons is the correct number. Uh, but since you last saw it, I think the only changes are that it's got a lot more leaf litter in because obviously we had autumn since the last reptile room tour, which seems weird because it was that long ago. Uh, but I've got loads more leaves in there and Red does love his leaves, especially when you spray water on him. He goes around sniffing them. Um, and then the lighting, that was the other thing, I can't even remember my words today. Uh, but basically, the lighting I have changed out a little bit. Um, the UV is still the same, reaching a UV index of about 2 at the maximum, going down to 0 in the complete shade, which is ideal for a corn snake. Um, but the other form of lighting is actually its heat bulb. Uh, so what I had before was just a ceramic heat emitter, which is not the best heater because it only gives out far infrared. Um, but the tungsten filament heat lamp, which I've got in there, gives out near infrared, and so it is a lot more useful. Now, just like Speckles, Red the Corn Snake did have a five-month hibernation period where he didn't eat anything. Uh, and coming out of that, he wasn't actually in the best shape. In a couple of locations, he had a little bit of scale rot. Uh, that did clear up with a single shed, though, so all the scale rot's gone. But then the shed he had wasn't complete. He still got a little bit stuck on his neck. Um, and if you don't know, apart from just humidity issues, 
one of the things with causing bad sheds is actually poor nutrition. Now, given that he was like not feeding for five months while I had him chilled, um, you know, nutrition could be a very big aspect of that bad shed. So since he's been up, I've actually given him three feeds and one of those feeds was actually a quail egg. Now, he's never had a quail egg before. It actually did take him quite a long time to figure out that it was food. And after he got it, it was like, he mouthed it once and then put it down and then had to think about it again before he picked it up. But eventually he did eat it. So I was really happy with that because it was just making him think about, you know, what is this new thing in his environment? Is it food or is it not? And then having to pick up and manipulate the egg was something quite unusual to him because obviously he couldn't grip it because the egg surface is smooth. Uh, but he did eat that and that is just a little bit of dietary variety that I've got in him now. Um, and apart from like the shedding issues, having those couple of feeds, he seems to be back to normal. Now the only thing that I do want to change with Red's enclosure is that I don't think there's enough branches in it for him to climb up. Uh, you know, there is a large number of branches, but they're all sort of flat on the ground. So what I want to do is get a couple more and sort of fix them to the walls of the vivarium, just to add more climbing options, and so that he has more of a choice in his ultraviolet exposure. And next up, we have the little bugger over here, who is usually running around and head bobbing at me at this point, but isn't today because he's actually being polite, and that is Char the Bearded Dragon. Char also had a brumation period, uh, it wasn't as long as Speckles and Red's, um, I think he went down like fully asleep in about mid-October and then he got up in mid-January, so that was like, you know, November, December, just sort of three months-ish rather than five, um, but coming up out of that he was completely fine and went back to his usual antics of running around and digging and jumping at things, um, and that's basically how he still is now. Now, Char's enclosure is the exact same dimensions as Red the Corn Snakes, so it's 150 centimetres long, 60 centimetres front to back, and 60 centimetres tall, working out at about 140 US gallons, and he does use every inch of that space. It seems to have been that since I've set it up, Char's enclosure has undergone the most amount of changes of any of the enclosures I've ever had, um, because I just seem to have different things to upgrade with it all the time and since I have got my hands on a solar meter 6.5 thank you very much to the person who let me buy that off them um, but since I've had that and I've been able to test things I found that the UV indexes in Charles indexes isn't a word don't pick me up on that it's indices okay that's what I said uh, so the UV indices in his enclosure aren't like quite the best. So what he actually has at the minute is a 44 Arcadia Dragon Lamp um, and that produces a UVI of about three right at the front of his enclosure because there is some distance between where he will be and where the lamp is. Um, and that is not really what you want. So for a bearded dragon I'd sort of be aiming for a UVI of four, five, even going up to six, right at the basking zone, and then the rest of the enclosure, you wanna be in more shade than that. What I've got is sort of a mid-level UV over the whole thing, which is not what you want. Also, just like for Red's enclosure, I do wanna change the branches around in this, because the branches that Char has got are far too thin for him to sit on comfortably, and bearded dragons, as I've discussed previously, are actually an arbo a semi-arboreal species, so having branches in there for them is important. So what I'll be doing probably sometime soon is getting loads of branches and doing these fives out with them. Um, and the branches that I've got in there are probably going to go in Speckles the Leopard Gecko setup. Um, but yeah. Now all of these upgrades with Charles Lighting and branches and things are in the works. Um, it's just getting them done is basically a case of funding because, you know, the lighting changes for him are going to be like 100 quid and then by the time you buy a load of branches that's not cheap either so getting that done is something I am working on um, and with recent events that I'm not going to talk about because you know what I'm alluding to it begins with C and ends in coronavirus. Um, so that has basically given me a lot more time to do reptile stuff because my A-levels have been cancelled which are like the exams I was going to be taking this summer 
So really the only thing holding me back for doing upgrades now is just funds. So over the next couple of weeks you should start to see me making videos about all those upgrades and explaining it. And the last pair of enclosures which I'm going to talk about at the same time are the two enclosures that I've got for my Chinese leopard snakes which are up here. Now both of these enclosures are 90 centimetres long, 60 centimetres front to back and 35 centimetres tall which puts them at about 50 US gallons. Now the snakes in them are like creatures that basically nobody's ever heard of. They're sort of like a mini Chinese corn snake is what they look like and is sort of what they are in terms of like taxonomic relations. Again that's a thing I've talked about in the past. But anyway, these enclosures haven't really changed since last time. Uh, they have got an Arcadia DP projector in each of them, which provides the heat. Uh, I am also going to be changing that out for tungsten filament heaters, because like I've explained, they are better. Um, and they do have Arcadia Pro T5 Shade Dweller units in each of them, which produce UV indices of about 1 at the max, trailing down to 0 at the like lowest point, which is whereabouts I'd like it to be for this species. Now the two snakes, I do have a male and female. The male is called Rusty because he's sort of a reddish colour and the female is called Chloe. And they are both wild types but, you know, the species is polymorphic so you do see a bit of variation there. Now I was actually planning to breed them this year uh, because they are getting on for full size, both of them. Uh, and since they have been out of brumation themselves, they've each eaten like five or six mice, uh, like one a week, which is really good. Um, so, I was planning on putting them together this weekend that I'm filming this, uh, but I've decided not to. I want to give them an extra year just to make sure they're mature, and just to make sure that Chloe is large enough to be okay with laying those eggs. Now, both of these snakes are really, really shy. I don't see very much of them at all. Uh, when you come in the reptile room, the sort of the heads are peeping out, and they're looking around, and they look at you very suspiciously, and then you make a move, and they just disappear. So they are definitely a very shy reptile and not something I would recommend if you want to be seeing them all the time. But they also seem to be quite intelligent, like really curious of what you're doing. They're just very wary of it at the same time. So I'm just hoping that as time goes on, they will become more accustomed and I'll see more of them. Now, before we move on to the other set of reptiles, which are not in the main reptile room, they're somewhere else, uh, I do want to address a big sort of elephant in the room, which is that. So I've actually documented me setting up this reptile room since there was actually nothing in here. Um, the first enclosures in here were these two. Uh, originally, that was Charles' quarantine enclosure, and then Char went in there, and then Greg came out, and then Speckles came out, and then last autumn, these came out. Uh, but there is still one last space, very obviously, for another vivarium, and that is something that I want to address over the next couple of weeks. Now I already know what species I ideally want to get and keep in it um, and there is somebody who has this species available and I've already contacted them so hopefully I'm already settled with that one uh, but I don't want to spoil it all I want to say thus far is that I've decided that all of the enclosures in here are sort of based on the same theme either the woodland setups or like dry setups with lots of cork bark and branches in them so what I want to do for this last enclosure is something a bit more tropical and a bit more jungly. And that's the only clue you're getting. Oh yeah, and this is the part of the video where I'm supposed to tell you to subscribe so that you don't miss that. And on the topic of jungly enclosures, let's move on to the two that I do already have. So my trio of line day geckos which do live in a DMS vivarium, which is like 50 by 40 by 40 centimetres, working out at about 20 US gallons. Uh, they obviously haven't got into hibernation because they aren't from a part of a world where they would do that in the wild and therefore they aren't evolved to do it. So over the winter all I did for those was reduce the photo period which is the amount of hours per day that the lights are on uh, and that did calm them down a bit and now they are all back up to speed. Throughout the winter I did make quite a few changes to the heating and lighting. So what I used to have was like just not really good enough for them, it wasn't hot enough uh, and the UV wasn't intense enough and the LED lights I had were really good but they were sort of designed in a way that sort of took up too much space on the top of the enclosure so all of that has been changed. 
What I've now got in terms of LED lighting to grow the plants is two Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED bars, which are each 15 watts. Then at the back over the mesh, I do have a little heat bulb, which is just a 25 watt um, heat lamp, standard heat lamp. And for the UV, I do have an Arcadia 12% UV flood. This produces an ultraviolet index of getting on for six, right at the top of the enclosure, which is ideal for these little animals uh, because, you know, they can shuttle out of that light quite easily to go right down to shade. So that is basically perfect for it. One thing to mention with this though is that the UV bulb is actually only about 10 centimetres away from where the geckos are, but the thing that makes it safe to put it that close is that the mesh screen that I've got is actually of a density to stop fruit flies escaping, and so it like reflects most of the ultraviolet out, and only a very small fraction of it actually gets into where the geckos are. This is one of the reasons why it is so important to have a solar meter, is that if you're going to be putting UV lights over a mesh, unless you can test it definitively using one of these items, then you don't know what UV is reaching your animal. An unfortunate consequence of changing the heating and lighting is that keeping moving things about on the top of the enclosure, because I did try a couple of things before I settled on this setup, uh, is that the changes have really scared the geckos. Um, I didn't expect them to go like this, but basically, whereas before, I used to see them all hopping around every single day, and they used to be really quite tame. They would sort of scarper when you open the doors, but when you walk past the enclosure any other time, they would just stay out. Um, basically, since scaring them, they've all been hiding, uh, and at the minute, I am trying my best to try and get them to come out more, so I'm starting tongue feeding them a bit more, and I have gotten each of them to take from the tongues. But I think getting them back to where they were is going to be a very slow process, unfortunately. Now, I know that there was a viewer of mine that wanted me to do a care guide on these geckos. And that is something I'm working on. It's just um, with changing all of the lighting out for them, I wanted to see whether what I did actually worked before I sort of reported it to you. And then I also want to see if I can get these geckos to become like completely tame um, so that I can like inform you about that in the care video rather than just going at it now and like the geckos aren't out and I've got nothing to show you and also the lighting that I've got isn't a tried and tested method yet. But moving next door to those, we do have my crested gecko splat, uh, and that is a species that I have done a care guide on. I think it was my previous video to this one. So if you want to learn more about crested geckos, then I'll leave a link to that video in the top right hand corner of the screen right now. Splat's enclosure is an exoterra small tall, I think. Um, it's 45 centimetres wide, 45 centimetres deep, and about 60 centimetres tall, which I think puts it at... 30 gallons, check in the script. Uh, now, since you last seen that, not really much has changed. Um, I think the only big difference is that I've got a different feeding bowl and I've got a different hide, which was sent to me from the creator of Level Up Reptiles, which is a UK company. Uh, now, as a little update to those, the feeding dish has been brilliant, Splat's used it every time, uh, whereas the hide it wasn't really sold on it for ages until I cut out a little bit of cardboard and put it on the side of the enclosure. And since it sort of blacked it out, uh, he has actually used the hide every single day, which is cool. The lighting and heating for this enclosure, um, I've just got a 25 watt heat bulb, an Arcadia Shade Dweller Pro T5 unit, as I've got in lots of my other enclosures, and I do have a 22 watt Arcadia Jungle Dawn LED bar. That did get sent to me when the Jungle Dawn LED bars were pretty new sometime last year. Uh, in terms of changes for the enclosure though, I'm pretty happy with it to be honest, everything's okay. The only thing I might do is add another Jungle Dawn LED bar at some point because the plants have just grown so much that the front of the enclosure is in darkness unless I move the LED. Now Splat himself is doing really well, he eats his food, he's pretty healthy, um, but I don't know. Um, the thing is with crested geckos is that they are more so than leopard geckos they only ever really come out after the lights have gone off and i am not a late nighter i regret to tell you um so i genuinely just don't see splat at all it's not like he's shy it's just i don't see him and he doesn't like being held so i sort of see him once a week when i feed him and that's about it so as a little note of caution if you're thinking about getting a crested gecko 
and you want an animal that you're going to see, unless you're going to be awake, like, into the middle of the night, it might not be the reptile for you. Moving on, the last thing that I want to talk about in today's video is actually my fish tank. Now, since the last reptile room tour where I showed it, I mean, I know it's not reptiles in a fish tank, but... I don't know, maybe you like to see it, maybe you don't. But I'm going to talk about it anyway, because it's my fish tank and I want to. Uh, but since the last time, uh, it did used to just have a Fluval U2 internal filter. And since then, it does actually have a new filter on it, which is a Fluval 207 external filter. And in putting that on has made a massive difference to the water clarity and just the cleanliness of the tank overall. Uh, and then I've also changed things about a bit. Uh, in terms of the planting, so it's got a lot more plants in there now and I have been dosing it with the salts that I mix up into my own sort of concoctions to get the plants to grow. Uh, I don't have any CO2 to it, I have just been using liquid carbon, so Flourish XL, and that does seem to be working well. So the fish tank at the minute is looking really quite good, a lot better than it used to. Uh, I think the only things I want to change with it is maybe a bit more lighting because it, it does look quite dim. Uh, and I also do want to get some more fish. But if you do want to see more about the Fluval Roma 90 Aquarium, then do leave some comments down in the description because I can make some videos about that if you want to see them. Now on the topic of videos, um, going away from talking about enclosures now, uh, I'm just going to mention this, um, is that because actually college or sixth form, whatever you want to call it, has been cancelled now, I am actually off until October, which is crazy. Um, so I am going to have a lot more time to spend making and editing videos. Uh, how many I'm going to do, I'm not sure. I am going to go back to my at least once weekly upload schedule. You're probably going to get two videos this week because this is like an update and I want it to be current rather than pre-recorded. Uh, so, you know, if you've got any ideas of things that you'd like to see, then do chuck them down in the description. I've already got plenty of ideas coming and plenty of things planned, like this new enclosure and all different upgrades and stuff. But if there's anything specifically that you want me to talk about, then just leave a suggestion and I'll probably get to it. Now anyway, I hope that this update video has been appreciated. If it has, then do subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss similar content that will be coming out in the near future. Uh, but for today, I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye guys!